entrepreneur Andrew Young is trying to distinguish himself from the pack of Democrats candidates because he has some different kinds of ideas and policies that have gained him a kind of a cult following. He's here to tell us what he's going to do for you. Please welcome Andrew Yang. Hey. Hey, well, Mr. Yang, I was telling you, I have a dear friend who's part of the Yang Gang and is riding very hard for you. So he's very excited you're on today. So you, I was first really introduced to you in the last debate, but there's a controversy going on right now because you accused NBC of cutting your mic off um, at times when you wanted to interject. NBC has denied that's happened, but it's a big conspiracy all over the internet. Can you clarify what happened? Um, well, I was only asked two questions over two hours, uh, and that's, uh, you know, like there for everyone to see um, and so I just shared my experience with some supporters after the fact but we're just thrilled that I have another debate in July and then also in September and October to keep getting our ideas out to the American people but how do, how do you make it so you don't speak you speak more than three minutes well we were joking that maybe I'd have like a sign or something <laughs> like, like hold it up um, but we're very confident that uh, that we'll get more um, opportunities in the were you the only one that happened to or did somebody else uh, also get screwed out I think one of the other candidates uh, said that her mic was also cut at very Marianne Williams yeah, I, I think that's right. I haven't talked to Marianne mm -hmm. about it, though. Yeah, because you spoke that he spoke less than three minutes or about three minutes. But you have some very dedicated followers. Uh, they call themselves the Yang Gang. Supporters wear hats that have uh, math written across the top. Make America think harder. Uh, <laughs> YouTube channel dedicated to getting you elected called Nerds for Andrew Young 2020. So, um, and I love that actually because I, I do think that, you know, I, I give a lot of credit to the American people. I, I think we're smarter than, than people are giving us credit for. And that's what I think you're trying to tap into. So oh. tell us about that. Well, uh, my campaign's dedicated to trying to solve the problems that got Donald Trump elected. We're in the midst of the greatest economic transformation in the history of our country, what experts are calling the fourth industrial revolution. And so Make America Think Harder is trying to get America focused on the fact that it's certainly not immigrants that are causing these problems. It's the fact that technology is pushing our economy to a point where more and more Americans are having a harder time finding paths forward. Amazon's closing 30% of our malls and stores in the next four years. And being a retail worker is still the most common job in this country. The average retail worker is a 30 year old woman making between nine and ten dollars an hour we know she doesn't have much in the way of savings so as her stores close the uh, opportunities disappear we have to start focusing on solving those problems and that's what uh, make america think harder it's the opposite of this uh, call to yesteryear we need to start solving the problems of today is anybody in the republican party giving any thought to that what you just said well, when you talk to politicians about this economic transformation we're in the midst of, unfortunately, a lot of the solutions revolve around education and retraining. Mm -hmm. But I looked into the studies around retraining manufacturing workers in the Midwest, and the results were very, very bad. Zero to 15 percent success rates. Yeah. So if you're a politician and you say, hey, we're going to educate Americans for the jobs of the future, then everyone's like, okay, that sounds great. But then when you dig into the reality, unfortunately, that's not the way well, it works. it didn't out. work, right? Because mm -hmm. we tried to do that when we moved mining. Yeah, we said we true. were going to retrain people, and, and it didn't work, as we heard from various people saying, well, there's nothing out there for me. Well, when they're climate deniers also, they don't even look at the possibility of having green jobs, jobs yeah, right. which jobs a lot of people learn, could, could go into that. But anyway, yes. you are also proposing something of a basic universal income, a freedom dividend, that's right. you call it. What does that mean exactly? So this is an idea that's been with America since our founding. Thomas Paine was for it. Martin Luther King championed it in 1967. Uh, it's a dividend for every American as a rate of citizenship. So under my plan, every American adult would receive $1,000 a month starting at age 18 every month uh, until you, you expire. What? Yes. Yeah. That will cost $3, million, $3 trillion. Where's this money coming from? Uh, so and what is the point of it, really? They say if you give a man a fish, if you give a man a fishing line, he can fish. If you give him one fish, he'll just eat that fish, something like that. <laughs> I think how I know the saying you're talking but about. But how does it go? You know that one? Yeah. So you hand somebody a thousand dollars. Now what good is that? They spend the thousand. Game big changer, deal. though, for people that are struggling. I know it's a bit of a game changer, but it's not a long-term solution. Come on. It actually uh, would help build a more human-centered economy, what I call the trickle-up economy, because it would allow more people to do the kind of work that they want.
want to do, including yeah. people like my wife, who's at home with our two young boys, one of whom is autistic. And right now, the market values her work at zero. Yeah. GDP values her work at zero. If you start putting resources into our hands, it actually expands what we think of yeah. as work. Well, now you're talking about paying women for doing housework and doing work at home, being mothers. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. Oh, good. <laughs> That's different. Uh, no, it, That's it, different. Well, I mean, again, and, and this is... <laughs> this is a game changer for the waitress at the diner who's getting yeah. harassed by her boss. It's a game yeah. changer for the single mom who's stuck in an abusive relationship. Yes. Like, we need to put the economic uh, resources into people's hands to be able to improve their but situation. But still, how are you going to pay for this exactly? Well, you know, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren, she's got a plan. Yeah. She's charging 2% <laughs> over certain millions and millions yeah, and yeah, millions. Yeah, yeah. What but, are you going to yeah. do? So, uh, my plan is to get the resources from the big winners of the 21st century economy. So, yes. the big winners are who? Amazon. Amazon. Trillion dollar company paid zero in taxes, less than everyone in this Apple, um, Apple mm -hmm. uh, Netflix, Google, these companies are great at just not paying a whole lot of taxes. Right. And so what you do is you have to look around the world and see that other countries have put a mechanism in place so the American people get a tiny slice of every Amazon sale, every Google search, every Facebook ad, every Uber mile, and that's enough to pay for a dividend of $1,000 a month, particularly because this money just comes back to us over and over again. Yeah, but you're, you're assuming that those companies are just going to go on ad infinitum, making, making, making millions and millions. Like, Amazon seems but to be my, doing that. My, with all due respect, as the millennial at the table. I would love what about any, me? I'm a any, millennial. But my gender and, Okay, excuse me, it's Joy and I as the millennials at the table. But every Democrat that comes on, the answer is write a check. And the problem is the deficit is going to my generation. And that's already the problem right now. So is there Wait any a minute. answer Who created to anything? that deficit? I'm asking Your the party. presidential okay. candidate this question, right. if you don't mind. I, I don't mind, but I want to answer it. Do you have an answer that is... Okay. Go ahead. Sir, you can Keep answer. Over you. No, no, no. No, no, please. I understand the question. Uh, and so I've run companies, and uh, you have a revenue problem in this country, and you have an expense problem in this country. Mm -hmm. You have to go after both of them. Um, but the big winners, so if you have artificial intelligence that Amazon's investing billions of dollars mm -hmm. in, yes. could displace three and a half million truck drivers. Uh, right now, it's the most common job in 29 states. The amount of value that gets generated from that immense, almost unbelievable, and right now the American people will get zero of that value. So if you put a mechanism in place, you can actually generate hundreds of billions of dollars. How is Amazon? Wait, Wait hold on, hold on, hold on, because take a break. We're going to take a break, but we're coming right back. Stick around. He's going to stick around. You stick around too. With you. Sure. You and again, uh, to get to know more about your policies, let's do a lightning speed round with you. Sure. Universal health care, yes or no? Yes. Mm. Robert Mueller is set to testify July 17th. Should Congress start impeachment hearings? We'd have to wait until, uh, until his testimony, but I'm thrilled that he's going to be testifying for Congress. What would he say that would change your mind to a definite yes? You know, uh, I'd have to, to see what the facts were. Also, I, I've been trying to put it on Congress to make that determination, really, because that's their job. Okay. Uh, closing the wealth gap, especially when it comes to the African-American community, reparations a part of that? Well, Martin Luther King championed a dividend for all Americans. I think that's where we should start, $1,000 a month for every American. And then reparations is a whole separate issue, because the $1,000 dividend doesn't address the historical legacy of slavery. Why should rich white people get $1,000 a month? Um, well, the, the great thing is that it'll remind them that they're still an American. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but, um, uh, yeah. but, in, in Alaska, but in Sir, Alaska, they have a dividend. No one at this table needs an extra thousand no. dollars a month. But in Alaska, they we have a dividend of a thousand dollars. Well, it, I don't. I wouldn't feel. I wouldn't feel right. I mean, when there's still veterans on the street and you could give it away. That's what you could give it away. That's what he means when he says it reminds you you're an American. It doesn't. It's not just about what you do for your yourself, it's what you do for other folks. Mm -hmm. And in Alaska, they give the dividend to everyone in Alaska from the petroleum fund, one mm -hmm. to $2,000 a year, and it, it depoliticizes it, it destigmatizes it, it's just everyone gets it, and so there's no, like, oh, you get it, I don't. Right. Immigration. Uh, I'm the son of immigrants myself. I think we need to create a, a path to citizenship um, over the long term. Okay. So you also have some unusual and I would say unorthodox um, 
stances as well. You came out against circumcision, correct? Well, you know, I think parents need to educate themselves on what the health information is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my, my wife and I obviously made a certain determination, uh, but it should be in the hands of the parents. Mm. In the hands of what? The parents. The parents. parents just because when you have a male Literally baby, they just toss it on you. Well, they tried to. They tried to just yeah. toss it. Yeah, they tried to. Yeah. Um, you also believe in free marriage counseling? Yeah, the, the data shows that if you grow up in a two-parent household, uh, certain outcomes are more likely. And so from a societal perspective, it makes perfect sense to try and keep couples together if they want to stay together. So would that just be like a social worker for every couple in America? <laughs> um, well, it'd be like a marriage counseling, uh, you know, stipend essentially, where it's like if you decide to seek I mean, marriage counseling, then they can just go and uh, get paid by... My version program. of marriage counseling is drinking Jack Daniels, shooting some guns and hanging out. So like my version and is different other? than it works. No, just like going to a range. So I'm just saying like this universal a peg for every hole is always my problem with the left right now. There is not a, every American is different. Every American does things in different ways. Oh, yeah. So I would say, I, I don't know. You also believe in staffing a White House psychologist. Yeah, now, that's an idea. Yeah. That's okay. a good yes. one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not mad at that one. That's fine. Oh, good. Well, we, we need to destigmatize mental health issues in this country generally. Uh, and so if we have a psychologist in the White House, I thought it was a good idea before the current administration. Do you think that okay. he's capable of even doing such a thing? You know what? It doesn't even matter. <laughs> Thanks we'll have one in my administration. That's right. Thanks to Andrew Yang. Really interesting. Yeah. I'm going to keep an eye on you. We'll be right yeah. back.